Hey everyone, this is Mr. Isometric and in this video, we are going to talk about action bone constraint. This constraint is going to be long, so I won't take your much time and let's just get started. So before explaining this constraint, I have to construct an armature on which we can use this constraint. So I'm just going to make a simple armature like that. Uh, I'll need a control target bone. So I'm going to duplicate this bone. Uh, you can have any target bone anytime in your uh, animation phase. They are not going to to be deforming any mesh so you can either use a bone or you can use an object or uh, empty whatever you want uh, doesn't really matter so now let's go ahead and do the ritual of turning on the name and uh, access let's make it 0.5 and let's go inside the pose mode now before we even start uh, using the constraint we need actions for our animation now uh, what action bone constraint does is it takes your existing actions and then uh, apply them to your armature animation like whatever you are animating that animation will be uh, drawn on top of it so this is really handy when you have when you are animating and you want something to be repeated like opening and closing of the hand you can actually map the action to it uh, and then you can just uh, move this bone up and down or rotate it to open and close your fingers or palm you'll get it what i mean uh, in a few minutes so let's start by creating the action so i will uh, split this window like this and then let's go to the dope sheet let's change the dope sheet to action editor and now let's create a new action i will name this action as uh, open one and also let's mark this as a fake user if you mark something as a fake user in blender then even if you close it like when you're not using it it will stay even if the, the there is no reference of it on any object so yeah just make sure that you mark your action as a fake user uh, also now let's select this bone over here and um, i'm going to select three of them hit i to add a keyframe you could also use auto keyframing but make sure that you turn that off now i'm going to rotate this bone on the x like this and let's create a simple action that I want. I'm going to rotate you by 90 degree like that. And I'm going to rotate this by 90 degree like this. Okay. So a really basic animation of uh, this kind. So remember that we are going from frame number one to 20. So yeah, just keep that in mind and uh, let's go back and uh, remove this action. Now, as you can see that when I move my timeline, I don't see that animation anymore uh, because it was an action. Now it is not anymore on the armature. And to have that animation on this armature, again, what I can use is the action bone constraint. Let's uh, select this bone. Let's add the action constraint on it. And now uh, let's select the target as our this bone. Uh, by the way, as you can see, we can also have object or empty over there. So yeah, just select those from over here. Uh, and now let's select the armature. Let's select the bone number six. Okay, now we see a lot of controls, but for now, uh, let's ignore all of this and let's ignore target. Let's directly jump to the action section of this uh, part. So in the action, we will set to our open one action. You can totally ignore this object action. I don't think any one of us are going to use this. So if you remember that our animation started at frame number one and ended at frame number 20, so we have to put that values over here and now uh, let's move to the target section. So as you guys know, uh, our bone number six is the target. So if this target, uh, any transform, which is location, rotation scale can affect the animation over there. Um, so we can map its location to control the animation. We can map its rotation and also we can map its scale to control that animation over there. Now let's select our constraint and let's see what the target is so in the channel section you will see that we have xyz location xyz rotation and xyz scale so for now in the world coordinate system i think i will keep it at the z location in the target world space so if i'm selecting the world space so our z starts zero is over there and my one is somewhere over here uh, and i can set that minimum and maximum range so if my bone moves from zero to one uh, then my animation should play the frames from z one to twenty so 
right now my z is at like a negative uh, or uh, it is at z0 so my animation is not being affected right now as you can see but as soon as i move my bone up you'll see that my action is now being played so i can control the animation uh, with just this bone and now if i rotate this bone over here like this as you can see that my child bone also rot got rotated and as you can see that it is still working like if i move from zero to one the animation is still working so i'm just going to reset oh wait uh, and now this is the most important thing and i did the mistake myself that i didn't turn off the auto key framing now if you are animating yeah it's well and good but i think it is bad for me to do this while i'm explaining so i'll just press alt g and alt r to reset everything uh good okay let's keep it at zero for now now as you can see the only this bone is being affected so you will need other bones to have the same configuration of the constraint as well so for that you can select the bones and then at the end select the bone on which you added the constraint press f3 and then just type in copy so you can select the copy constraint to selected bones and now if i move this bone as you can see my animation is being played and it is being recorded so at any given time i can go back and then rotate any of the child bone like this or even i can move this, this bones as well but i'll just show you that it is still working so if i grab it as you can see z0 to 1 the animation is still working so 0 1 so now i think you might have gotten an idea of how this constraint is so useful and so handy now as i said you can always rotate the uh initial like you can give initial rotation or you can even change the animation like this so suppose i made bones to go like that and now if i go like this the bones now they will not go to their original state but actually they will like they now had added the rotation on top of it so it is not getting fully closed because i already closed it so i can just anytime select these bones press alt r to remove the rotation and they are back uh, also at any given time i can rotate this if i want and now if i do this you'll see that this bone now has a rotation and it is not um, straight anymore so yeah using this constraint is really handy and uh, you will find the use cases when you need like flapping of wings opening and closing of hands and some other actions like making a fist and all so yeah you can use it like that now let's talk about something uh, different with the world coordinates now as you saw now this was the location part now let's try the rotation part so if i rotate on the x i want the animation to be controlled but also i want the same setting to be on the other bone as well so i'm just going to select other bones select this bone at the end press f3 and then just copy constraint to selected bones um, now you might notice that a bone has already been rotated uh, and that is because the minimum and maximum range now right now the maximum range is in degrees i'll just make sure that it is 90 degree or something uh, higher in between 180 and minus 180 so i'm going to make this 90 so 0 to 90 i want this animation to be controlled so uh, if i now rotate it like this uh, it is opened and now it is suddenly closed now the reason why this is happening is because we only made change in the this bone and we forgot to add those changes to this bones so i'll select those bones again f3 uh, and then copy constraint okay now let's rotate it again and as you can see now it is opening right now really nicely so minus 90 to 90 now you can again go ahead and make this something like 90 to 180 i guess so you can manually add the offset now you'll see what i did right now uh, let me just copy constraint to selected bone again now if i rotate this like this oh wait i think it will go right this now okay there you go so as you can see now my rotation is controlling the animation which is great now let's try the scale one uh, so i'll use my uh, z scale uh, to control it so my minimum scale should be one and my maximum should be two now if you make it zero then i'll have to scale my bone to zero i guess um, that's why i kept it at one so now my scale is controlling it so if i now scale it up 
then let's scale it down uh, also i again forgot to um, select this bones select that at the end f3 copy constraint to selected bones and now if i scale it up you'll see that my scale is now controlling the action and i'm really sorry for the uh, bad framing of this constraint so now as you can see it is working you can also individually just scale it on the z and it will still work oh wait it is not oh, damn. um okay so the scale is right now you uh, being uniformed ah okay press alt s to reset the scale okay so scaling has to be uniform okay got it you cannot just uh, use individual component um okay so that's how you use this constraint now there is also one more important thing um well, let's use the local space because most of the time uh you will find yourself using this in a local space instead of uh, the world coordinate but yeah it totally depends on you so i'm just going to uh use my y location now as you guys know that uh, every bone it's uh from head to tail it points in y direction and it is always true as you can see so i'm going to use the y location uh, and then i'm going to set it to local space uh, and i'm going to move from zero to one in the local space now let's select this bone select this bone f3 and now this will update our uh, new updated settings select this bone and if i now move it in the local y as you can see this is working which is nice but now i can again rotate the parent bone like this if i want and all i need to do is just rotate this from there to there and it will still work so i really like using this in a local coordinate system um it is really handy that way but the thing is if i rotate this now um i'll still be using this so totally uh, depends on your use case i could parent this bone to my bone number two uh and it will rotate with it so then i can like move it down like this uh but yeah it totally depends on where you want to parent which bone uh, and same goes with the other location rotation and scale so that's how this constraint works now there is also uh some settings that i didn't mention and those are the mix mode now mixing mode um let's just keep it at before original split scale split channel the mix mode and the object action you'll probably don't have to change them in any way uh, but you can experiment with it if you want but uh, i don't think much will happen so the next thing is the influence now influence uh, it is like turning this constraint on and off so you can animate these values uh, and if you keep it at uh, 5.5 or uh, 0.3 then only 30 percent of this constraint will work and any other constraint that is above or below it will have the more effect over the bones i guess um so yeah that this will also act as a weight value of that constraint and next let's talk about the evaluation time if you check this you will not need the target or the target channel like target will be redundant in this in this case so if this value goes from zero to one your action will be played so you can uh use this with the drivers or uh, any f curves if you want then you can add modifiers on top of it also let's update the other two as well by the way if you hold down alt uh, and if you click you can uh, change the setting for those bones so i'll just turn on the evaluation time for every one of them so now if this goes from zero to one i can manually make action to go from zero to one like this so in that case you don't need target you just need this uh, uh, f curve or you can say this anim animation or this slider so yeah that's also a thing that you can do um, i think that's it okay so that's how you can use the action bone constraint now this constraint is really useful it has helped me a lot in my freelancing days um so yeah i hope you all learned something new and hope this video helped i'm talking about all of this bone constraints in their own separate videos and all those videos are in a single playlist on my youtube channel also if you have any recommendation for a tutorial comment down below i have a ko-fi and discord so join and support if you want or else 
for free you can always subscribe to the channel hit like and share it with your friend that is all for to support this channel and help me motivate me to keep making more videos like this so yeah thank you all so much for watching i'll see you in the next video bye bye